All right. Hello, everyone. Morgan Heitzma here with Scott Leroy Marketing. And today we're going to be talking about DocuSign 101. Uh, before we get started here today, just know that today's class is going to be recorded. So uh, you can go ahead and find that on our YouTube page. Um, I believe about 24 hours after this uh, live recording here today. So it may take a few moments to uh, process, but it should be up there the very next day for you. Um, within today's training, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to uh, put them in the chat box down below. I'll do my best to uh, address those as they come up. But if I miss any questions, please note that I'll stay for a few minutes at the end of class here today to, uh, to help address those. Um, if by chance I miss the, the, the questions that you have completely, right, uh, or if I just don't have the answers on hand, just know that you can reach out to us at support at scottleroymarketing.com. Uh, we'll be on the other end there to help answer any additional questions that you may have. I'm going to put the, uh, the email in the chat box down below for you so you guys have that. Um, and let's go ahead and dive right in. So as you guys can kind of see right here, we are on the KW Command uh, login page. If this is your very first time uh, navigating to the KW Command platform, it's going to be agent.kw.com. Uh, you'll be greeted with this login page here, which takes your KW username and password. Uh, it's generally the first letter of your first name followed by your last name. If it's a pretty common combination like John Smith, you may have a number associated at the end here. Now for today's demonstration, we're gonna go ahead and use uh, Scott's login. We'll go ahead and sign in here. And once we sign into the uh, KW Command platform here, it's gonna take us to the KW Command homepage. And uh, from within the homepage, uh, our DocuSign account can, can truly be found within our opportunities page. So if we go ahead and click on the red KW square on the top left-hand corner, and it'll open up the left-hand titles to these different pages here. Uh, your DocuSign tool is really going to be housed within the Opportunities section right here. And I'll go ahead and zoom in this page so you can see it a little bit easier here. There we go. Uh, the Opportunities page is where your DocuSign is going to be housed. Uh, however, before we actually jump into the uh, Opportunities section, we're going to want to do a little bit of setup here first. So when we're ready to submit our documents to be signed by our clients, uh, there won't be anything uh, in our way to, uh, to help send those out. So as we're taking a look here on the KW Command homepage, uh, the first place that we want to navigate to is going to be our name on the top right-hand corner of Command. It should say our name as well as our headshot right here. And if we give this a click, this should give us a drop-down here that shows an, a number of different uh, additional options for us. We're going to be looking for the Settings option right here. We'll go ahead and give that a click. And it should take us to our settings page within KW Command. Inside of this settings page right here, the left hand side is where all those typical additional settings will be found. Uh, but the right hand side right here is going to be all of these third party applications that you are already currently using, like Facebook or Instagram, uh, that you can go ahead and connect with your KW Command platform. Now, um, all these are pretty self-explanatory. If you have it, go ahead and connect it. Uh, one of these options here are gonna be a little bit different than the rest, and that's going to be the DocuSign portion all the way up top here. Now, as you see here, I have this DocuSign already connected. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this right here just so we can start from scratch. And as you see, um, it removed the DocuSign, but you should be able to find it underneath the Digital Signature and Transactions section right here. Now, uh, remember when I said that uh, all of these are pretty self-explanatory, we can kind of connect them if we have them. The DocuSign section is gonna be that one section that's gonna be a little bit different than the rest. This will be how you actually um, initiate or create your KW branded DocuSign account. So everything starts from the settings page right here. Um, now, just please keep in mind that uh, when we go through and we kind of set up this connection right here, uh, there's gonna be a few different uh, limitations. Uh, one of which is, uh, unfortunately, the KW Command platform is not able to connect um, personal DocuSign accounts or paid DocuSign accounts that you've had in the past. So for example, if you've closed on your home or if you're currently paying for DocuSign, um, what we can do is we can go ahead and um, 
we can go ahead and create a new one. Um, sound check really quick. Can everyone hear my volume okay? Is it a little low? Perfect. Um, if you if you need me to adjust my audio, perfect. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. If you need me to adjust my audio, I, I can increase it just a, ever so slightly for you. Um, but again, just let me know if everything's running run smoothly. So I appreciate it, you guys. Um, as we're taking a look right here, again, this will be where we initiate that KW branded DocuSign account. So we have to travel here to our settings. Uh, we'll go ahead and click on connect account right here. And this will be the first portion of setting up our KW DocuSign account. So as you see right here, it asks us for our preferred first name, our preferred last name, and our preferred email address. Um, this is what I was kind of talking about before, is if you already have a um, DocuSign account connected to this email address right here, you may get that uh, ugly red error message right down below here. So. Um, again, it has to be an email address that's not currently associated with any other DocuSign account in order to be compatible. Now, um, as you see right here, um, this gives us our, our name and our email, but doesn't quite give us the ability to create a password just yet. Um, that password option is going to come in the form of a registration email through DocuSign. So for example, once I set this up and I, I click on send registration email, DocuSign will send an email to scottleroy at kw.com and um, allow me to create a password as well as a security question. Now, if you already have a KW branded DocuSign account and it somehow gets disconnected, right? Or you need to disconnect it and reconnect, reconnect it because things are not quite working uh, too well. Uh, what we have here is this login here button. So as you can see, since we disconnected my uh, DocuSign account originally, uh, we can go ahead and click on that login here button, and this should give us the ability to, to um, enter our email as well as our password. So I'll type in Morgan Heitzma right here. I'll click on login to DocuSign, and depending on how long ago it's been since I signed in last, uh, it may give me that pop-up right here to create, uh, to enter in my password. Once I enter in my password, it should allow me to, uh, to connect this full circle with my KW command. And as you see, it says DocuSign. This pop-up said DocuSign is now connected and it's ready to be found inside of your opportunities. Um, as we scroll up here again, you can see that this DocuSign has indeed been connected and it'll show you an indication of what email address is associated right here. Now, so since step one has successfully been completed right here, right? We've connected our DocuSign account. We've created a KW branded DocuSign account. Next will be to create that opportunity. And um, in order to create an opportunity, we will first need to create a contact. So that's gonna be step two. Step two in creating a contact, we'll navigate over here to our contacts. We can give this uh, title a click here, and this will be where all of our contacts are contacts are housed. Now, uh, full disclosure, we have a full database class. Uh, if you guys are wondering how to kind of add contacts, edit contacts, um, as well as some other additional options. Um, but I did want to show you this here that this is essentially the second step after connecting your DocuSign. So we'll go ahead and uh, create a, um, a contact here, or we'll go ahead and find one from our, our uh, database. As you see, I have one right here. And when we take a look at this contact here, uh, we have two different options to create an opportunity. We can create an opportunity straight from the uh, contact card right here. So if we're working inside of contacts today and we want to create opportunities for the contacts, we can simply navigate right next to the timeline option, give that a click, and we can create some opportunities. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a, um, whoops, I'm going to create a listing opportunity right here. Client will be myself. Opportunity type will be a listing. And I'm not going to enter, I'm not going to spend too much time entering this information. Uh, we do have the additional class for opportunities as well. 
Um, but once I create an opportunity here and we enter this opportunity, we'll have our documents section right here. Now, there's two ways to enter the opportunity. I kind of showed you the way from the uh, contacts portion. However, if we were to travel over to the actual opportunities page, we should be able to find that um, inside of the timeline as well. So I can scroll down, we'll find Morgan Heights my listing right here. Now, taking a look at this, I'm gonna close up the left-hand side here. Taking a look at this opportunity, we're gonna navigate over to the document section right here. Clicking on documents, this gives you the ability to submit your documents, your signed completed documents to your market center for approval. And um, there's a number of different ways that we can pull in those documents for, uh, for submitting to our market center. Uh, it all starts with this left-hand side right here. Um, again, I always like to say full disclosure, uh, your market center is the one that creates these checklists that you're going to see here in a minute. So if mine looks a little bit different than, um, than yours, just keep in mind that that, that is to be expected. Um, I did have a question, a great question that popped up. How do I get to this page from the timeline? So uh, just again, just navigating back here to uh, the opportunities page. Looks like two people shaking hands. We'll go ahead and look at where our opportunities are. Since I just created mine underneath the listing cultivate section, all I have to do here is click on this bubble and then I'll scroll down and I'll locate that opportunity. And then once I find the opportunity, I can click on the blue title and it should bring me back in here. And then I'm gonna navigate over to the documents section. Um, as we're taking a look right here, I'm gonna go ahead and pick a uh, residential listing taking a look right here you also have your listed under contract and closed uh, uh, drop downs here for us to, to add our documents to to be submitted to our market center now um, as you see right here we have my computer so again we can drag and drop files that we have in our computer that we've saved um, but if you have your DocuSign successfully connected like we did inside of our settings just a moment ago uh, you should see this dark gray button here that says start a transaction. Now this, um, this button right here may change colors. Uh, that will depend on if you have a DocuSign room connected or, or if you don't. Um, now the start a transaction, the dark gray button is an indicator saying you do have your DocuSign account connected to command. However, there is no room just yet connected to this opportunity. Once we click on start a transaction, this should give us a pop-up, a new tab, and, uh, and it should bring us into our opportunity, our DocuSign room. It'll also change this color to, um, to one of these buttons up here, so like a white button with uh, blue text. So we'll go ahead and click on this right here, start a transaction. Depending on what you have here, uh, we'll select DocuSign for today. And it gives us that pop-up to a new tab right here. You may have to sign in. It may give you a sign-in page, but since we just signed in a moment ago, uh, it didn't need that. Um, and now you're brought to this uh, DocuSign room page. What's cool about this is, let me zoom this up just a little bit here. What's cool about this is um, it brings in all of the information about that opportunity. So it shows Morgan Heights my listing as the uh, opportunity name. It also gives additional details. Now, working backwards here, I'm going to jump back over to the uh, to the opportunity. You also have the ability to to select from listings right here. So, since we're working with a listing inside of an opportunity, we can actually select from the MLS. I'm going to go show all listings right here, And I'll go ahead and enter in 123 Main Street. I'll go ahead and select one of these for uh, the time being. And as you see right here, it integrated that information uh, with, um, with this right here. So it actually pulled in 123 Main Street um, and, and the additional info. Now, since we already created that DocuSign room, and since the DocuSign rooms draw from the opportunity, um, we made a big big change here inside the opportunity. So we'll just go ahead and sync this transaction and that should sync that new information that we've added to the uh, opportunity back over to the DocuSign rooms here. So we'll click sync transaction really quick. Our information has been successfully synced. And then when we go back to our uh, DocuSign, I'm actually gonna exit this out then open back in here.
And as we take a look right here, this should have additional information. So as you see right below the Morgan Heights Mall listing, now we have the 123 Main Street uh, listing information that we just populated. Um, and again, uh, one, one, one other time right here on the details tab, your sync transaction, once you make any updates, it should appear right here underneath your general information. Now, um, now taking a look at this, uh, it's pretty cool because when we pull in a listing and it pulls in this information, if we toggle over from the documents section over to the details tab right here, this should bring up all of the information that's pulling from that, from that opportunity. So as you see, it has seller one information. As we scroll down a little bit further, we didn't add a seller to, but now we have that listing agent. Since we're inside of Scott's command, uh, Scott's going to be that listing agent. I'm going to be the, uh, the seller. And again, if you have any additional information that you want to edit or add to this that may not be pulling from the um, opportunity, we can click on this edit button at the very top right here. And this should open up all of these sections for us to be able to fill in additional information. Once you're done filling in this information, we'll go ahead and hit save on the bottom right hand corner here. And that should save any, any, any additional info that you need to add. Now, taking a look right here, we have our details, documents, people, envelope, messages, and history. This is going to be our main kind of navigation right here. Um, every time we jump into a uh, DocuSign room from our opportunity, uh, it may take us to our documents section first. So this is kind of, this is kind of like our homepage for the, uh, for the DocuSign rooms right here. As we take a look at this right here, we notice that we don't quite have any documents added to this 123 Main Street listing. Um, to go ahead and add that, we'll click on the blue add button on the top right hand corner here. This will give us a few different options to be able to pull forms from. You can pull them from your computer, uh, but really what I kind of want to highlight here is going to be this DocuSign Forms section right here. If I click on DocuSign Forms, uh, you'll have your groups and your libraries. One's going to be for your Market Center Forms, so the forms that your Market Center uh, adds to this uh, DocuSign Forms right here. And one's going to pull from your Board Forms, right? So your, your NRDS. And um, as we take a look at these two right here, we can go ahead and we can kind of click through here. And if I go down to say um, GGAR right here, you may see other additional information uh, for that as well. Now, uh, what I do kind of want to show is um, if you ever come into a situation where, let me pull one of these forms in really quick. If we get, get into a situation where we're pulling in forms, but for some reason it gives us a, let's see if we can find it. Well, um, I'm not quite sure if I can find it right here on today's training, but I can at least talk about it for a minute. Um, as you see right here, uh, when I pulled that uh, GGAR change form in, uh, into my DocuSign room, it says in use right here. Uh, you may come into another situation where there may be a tag right here that says no access. And uh, truly what that means is there's going to be another connection that needs to take place before you can utilize those forms. And um, again, I'm not doing a very good job finding a, um, a form that has no access right here. But if you come across that, how we, um, how we get that to pull through correctly, uh, we can go ahead and click on our name on the top right hand corner here within DocuSign Rooms. And then we can navigate down to Preferences right here. Once, once inside of Preferences, we'll choose Integrations. And integrations is where we're going to go to add our market center forms as well as our board forms. Now you see, I have company forms right here. That's going to be my market center forms. Um, if you don't have anything just yet, you may have this ad provider, maybe like a blue button right here that we can go ahead and give that a click. And um, once this loads up here, all right, let's see if we can kind of refresh this for a minute. 
And once this loads up right here, uh, the bottom the bottom right hand corner is going to show continue to company forms without validation. This is actually going to be like a clickable link right here. And once you click on this, then it's going to bring in your market center forms uh, right here, your company forms. Uh, when we click add a provider again, depending on your realtor association, you'll be able to kind of choose between uh, any one of these six options here. But again, within the National Association of Realtors, when we give this a click, we can enter in our NRDS number, our last name, as well as our, our specific board right here. So again, just know that uh, this would be how we go to, um, to pull in our, our board forms to be able to utilize them inside of our, our uh, DocuSign rooms. Now, um, now for those of you who uh, may be using zip forms, right? Um, this is gonna be the connection up top here. So we have our zip forms. We can go ahead and click on this blue arrow. We can enter our zip forms username and password. And then I believe uh, once, once you um, log in here, it should allow you to be able to pull um, from your um, transactions folders as well as your, um, your zip form libraries. So, um, so this will give you the option to do that as well if you guys are utilizing this section. Now, going back over to our rooms, right? Um, we can actually click on the top section right here. We can click on rooms. Depending on how many opportunities and, and um, DocuSign rooms you have, it may not be this crazy. This is just for uh, teaching examples, but you should be able to locate your, uh, your opportunity uh, within the rooms button right here. Then we can navigate our way back. And as you see, we're back to our document section. Now, um, as we're taking a look right here, um, there's going to be a couple other things that, uh, that we may want to take a look at. And one of which is going to be um, sending a, a envelope out to get signatures. So um, in order to kind of do this, um, we'll need to first pull a form in. So I already pulled one in right here, but let me pull in a secondary form. So I have two forms right here uh, that I can take a look at. What's kind of cool is um, if we take a look at the bottom right hand corner here, it kind of looks like a document icon and it says the word form right below it in, uh, in a blue background. Uh, this is a, a DocuSign power form, what they call a power form that auto pulls information based off of your details tab right here. So it's a cool way to be able to kind of auto pull this info without having to re-enter it every single time uh, within a document or specifically one of these power forms. So taking a look at this, let's jump in here. If I give that form a click right here, it should allow me to view as well as edit any kind of information that I need to. So you see it pulled in that one, two, three Main Street information from the listing that we added in that uh, opportunity. It pulled uh, Scott's name as the, um, as the listing agent, and then as well as any other kind of uh, price here. So it pulled in the listing price. Um, and then again, if I were to have added any additional information, um, it would have pre-populated here as well. So um, first and foremost, it'll pull from the opportunity. Second, it's gonna pull from the details here. Now, if I like this document and I think that it's ready to be sent out to my clients here, instead of clicking on the picture, uh, we can actually click on the checkbox on the top left-hand corner. And this should bring up a new menu option right here in the center. So I'm gonna uncheck and recheck it again. You see that that pops up right here. And we're actually gonna be looking for the center button that looks like a pen. And this pen is how we actually create an envelope. And for those of you who are wondering, what's an envelope? Well, um, kind of think of DocuSign as kind of a digital version of writing out documents or writing out a letter to, to envelope or mail out to your uh, clients, right? Only this is digital, so it's gonna be an email um, and the envelope is just gonna be um, uh, for your digital forms. Now, one thing that I, uh, let me let me back, back out of this really quick. One thing that, uh, that I want to kind of stress on as well is the fact that there is um, uh, there's a new update that happened a few months ago uh, within this DocuSign right here. And um, I know every once in a while it may be a little confusing to, to jump through here, 
Uh, but going a little bit slower here, um, clicking this checkbox, taking a look at these menu options, uh, this should give us the ability to um, click on create envelope. And then this new section right here is a new pop-up that happened about a few months ago. Uh, what this pop-up is, is pretty much stating is um, who's going to be on this document to sign. Is it the listing agent? Is it going to be the seller? Uh, who's signing this document? And uh, since we pre-populate that information from the details tab, uh, it should auto-pull that information. So we can pull in the listing agent. Let's just do the listing agent here for, for now. Um, and that should be Scott. We're going to hit continue here. And it should take us over to our next page where we're going to go ahead and create that kind of email or quote envelope. Now, as we, as we pulled in that listing agent, you see that it automatically added Scott's uh, name and email address inside of this uh, ad recipient section. So it's a, it's a cool, quick way to be able to, to pre-populate your contacts. Um, the old-fashioned way, the standard way uh, before that update happened would be to go to this next page here and click Add Recipient this way. Um, this is going to be the second update that recently happened a few months ago. And here, um, instead of entering the name and then entering in the email address, uh, we actually have the ability to enter in just say the name. And it'll search for everybody who is either in your contacts or who, who is a part of this, um, this one DocuSign room right here. So as you see right here, there's quite a bit of Morgan. So let me type in Morgan Heitzma. There we go. And then it kind of pre-populates a, a little bit more right here. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a click here. You'll see that not only did it enter my name, but it also pre-populated my email address as well. So again, another quick, convenient way to be able to enter these, these contacts. Um, before we continue onward here, there's going to be one section that I kind of want to highlight. Um, and this is pretty important because this is going to be your signing order. The way that signing order works is First it goes signer one, and then signer two, signer three, and so on and so forth. So um, signer two cannot sign unless signer one has first already signed their portion. So for example, if Scott is waiting on me to sign something first, uh, what I can do is I can click on this checkbox right here that says set signing order. And it'll indicate right here this is signer number one, and this is signer number two. Um, since we're dealing with technology, right, and, you know, everything is always kind of live and moving and updating, uh, just know that, uh, that every once in a while there may be, like, technical issues or technical glitches. And I'm about to show you one right here, uh, but fear not, we can always use that, uh, that human side of ourselves to be able to, um, to kind of adjust this accordingly. So if you have multiple signers right here, uh, you can see that signing order, signer one and signer two. If you say, oh, actually, Morgan needs to sign first, so we're going to drag Morgan up top here. Sometimes it will create an error right here where you'll see now both of these are actually indicated as signer one, so we may need to kind of adjust that accordingly here. So I'm actually going to make Scott signer two, and then you see then it kind of rotates over. So just know that, uh, that we may want to double-check this signing order here just to make sure that... Uh, that the appropriate people are signing in the appropriate order. Now, one thing that I skipped over here is you saw that we kind of pulled in this form right here. You do have the ability to pull in additional forms as well. So since I had two forms inside of that DocuSign room, I can click upload right here and I can browse from my computer. I can use a template or I can add additional room documents. If I click add room documents right here, it'll show me all the documents that are currently inside of that room. Since I did the GGAR, I'll go ahead and do the CAR. I'll add that. And now, we've, uh, um, now we have added two documents to this envelope right here. So, um, and again, depending on how many signers um, are on this envelope right here, uh, we do want to add the documents first before adding the recipients. So uh, that document may, had, uh, may have had additional signers. Um, but again, as you see, this is a great example 
of what may happen digitally on, on the back end that we may need to adjust right here. So we can do signer one, we'll hit signer two right here, number three, and then number four. And then again, this should, this should keep that in, in that proper order for you. So I'm going to delete um, both of these signers right here. I'm going to go ahead and add myself. I'm going to add Scott again. And then um, down at the very bottom, we have our message. So um, this is essentially going to take place of your email. Um, if you take a look at this right here, uh, this is going to be that subject line. Um, if you want to add any additional contacts in that subject line, um, I think for now this is great because it says please DocuSign. It tells us which form they're going to be DocuSigning. Um, and maybe I'll add that additional CAR form as well. Um, any additional message you want to add to your doc, uh, to your clients when they're opening up this email, uh, you can feel free to do so. Um, however, I do believe that uh, that. DocuSign does a fantastic job of, of packaging up a nice um, click here to sign uh, email. So there, you don't have to add this additional context, but if you'd like to, it's here for you. Last but not least, you have your rem, uh, frequency of reminders. So how often are you going to remind this uh, individual right here? Um, last but not least, one thing that I forgot to skip, uh, one thing that I forgot to mention is uh, the ad recipients uh, section. There's, there's the ability to choose what this person needs to do. Uh, so it's gonna be stock standard as this person needs to sign. But if somebody needs to uh, say, just receive a copy, you can toggle that over um, accordingly. There's also the ability to have an in-person signer as well. So uh, this kind of gives you a lot of different leeway uh, in terms of, of having those uh, documents get signed. Um, I have a great question here. How do you make everything encrypted? That's a fantastic question as well. So you have this customize option right here on the right hand side. If you give this a click right here, you can add an access code or add a private message to that individual, right? So whoever is getting the document is, is going to be the person who has to enter that access code. So, uh, but yeah, it's pretty cool to be able to, to add that for each individual. Now, scrolling down here, kind of looks like everything's pretty much completed here. Um, the next page is going to be where we add our signatures, our dates, our signs, our initials, those types of deals before we, before we send them off to our clients. So clicking on next here, at the bottom, uh, it'll show us all of this information within this document right here. And again, there is still some pre-populated information that we can enter uh, before sending it off. Um, but one thing that I want to highlight is on the top left hand corner right here, you'll see uh, your client's name. So this will be all the different signers that are participating in this document right here. So since I only added myself and Scott right here, you'll only see us two. Um, now we also have a different color associated with our names. So everybody, everything that's, uh, that is in orange or in yellow right here is going to be for Morgan right here. Everything that's going to be in blue is going to be for Scott. And so when we go ahead and apply these different signatures in these different locations, it gives us a good indication on who is going to be needing to sign in which location right here. So now we can see this one's for Scott, this one's for Morgan. If we need to adjust this at all, um, again, I like to say the left hand side is going to be all of your tools. The right hand side are going to be all the different options for the tools. So if I give this a click here, click on sign, here's all my different options for my sign uh, tool right here. So first and foremost, I can actually change the recipient info. So I can change this over to Scott. I can change this one back over to Morgan and we can kind of adjust that accordingly. The second thing is going to be, um, is this going to be a required field or not? Um, is, is this uh, individual required to sign in this section? Uh, if so, we'll go ahead and leave that checked as required field. If this is an optional section, kind of like a, a, a bubble or a checkbox, right? Uh, what we can do is we can uncheck it and say, this is an optional field for your client to be able to select. 
Now, uh, one thing to keep in mind, I'm going to make both of these uh, signs uh, optional here. Um, if we take a look right here, we'll drag these up. If we take a look right here, we can still see that uh, Morgan still needs to sign this um, square here because that's still in that orange slash yellow. And then Scott will sign right here because this is the blue outline. Um, taking a further look right here, we have all these gray sections. And these gray sections are actually going to be for you, the agent, to fill out like last call pretty much before sending off to, to your clients. Just keep in mind that these dates and these sections are within a gray background right here, gray outline. And this gray outline, even if you don't enter anything in right here, it's not going to show up for your clients. So a great example is let me go ahead and find some signature sections. Here we go. So I have my two signature sections right here. I can shrink them down. Whatever object you click, you may have a few dots on the, on the edges here. But we can kind of shrink them down to kind of fit that document a little bit better. Now again, there's going to be some other cool options as well, which is going to be your date. Uh, your date signed is going to be the date that, um, that the individual actually is signing this document. This is an auto-populated um, date sign, so there's nothing that we can really do to kind of alter or edit this. I mean, there is um, there is text, I mean like a font uh, if you'd like, but, uh, but again, this would uh, just be, I think, a date and timestamp, and I believe like, um, like a minute and second timestamp as well. Um, but we'll bring one over here. Other options, uh, if I want to add another date section right here, I can right click on this. I can copy this and I can right click this right here and I can paste this in two different ways. I can just hit paste and it'll paste it, you know, kind of next to the, uh, next to the object. But if I paste exactly where my cursor is and hit paste to location, it'll actually paste it exactly where my cursor was. I'll swap this one back over to Scott. And now we have two signatures with two dates signed. A few other cool options as well is going to be, um, you know, you have your check boxes right here. Uh, you have that color again to indicate. These ones are going to be just for you. It's going to go away once, uh, once we send these out. And then again, we'll copy right, right click, copy, right click, paste to location. And again, it, on the right hand side, we'll go ahead and swap over to Scott. So. This gives us a number of different options. One last thing I want to show you on this side right here is going to be um, drop downs because I think drop downs are pretty cool, but I knew I do know that sometimes they're a little bit tricky on the right hand side when we have all the editable options. Um, but just note when we drag a a drop down over here um, on the right hand side, it's going to be within your options section right here. Uh, you as you see, it says select right here. We can actually add. A number of different options for them to be able to select and then this should reflect inside here if I actually give this a double click right here we can see the live view of what that looks like and again if you want them to um, you know kind of indicate like that they want to select one instead um, you can use that as the default option we'll change it back to select here now, um, now taking a look here, Scott and Morgan both have one, two, three, four, five, six different options here. So I'm going to delete this drop down here. When we're ready to send this out to our clients, uh, we'll click um, on send on the bottom right hand corner here. If you're wondering what this is going to look like from your client's point of view, on the top here, we can click on preview. We'll click on this first. And on the top left, you can see uh, a view from Morgan's point of view or Scott's point of view or anybody's point of view who, who's going to be viewing this document right here. Now, as you can kind of see this, um, it, it didn't add any of those optional sections for us. So the client can't click on these check boxes that we saw a minute ago, but they can scroll down and they can select all of these options that they, that they have here. So whatever is in color is what, what that client is going to be able to sign or edit. Um, you can also view up the top here. This is a desktop view. We have a tablet view, and then we also have a mobile view as well. So again, your clients will be able to kind of sign this uh, any which way. When we're happy with this, um, you know, we can either save and close as a draft. We can um, send it out. 
uh, for me, I'm actually going to save and close this as a draft. Um, and I'm going to edit an email address because I put in an email address that was incorrect on this envelope here. Now, again, just trying to reorient ourselves here, uh, going back to the document section, this is where we are within our uh, DocuSign rooms if we were to go to a uh, transaction inside of our opportunity. So go to the opportunity, go to transaction. We'll jump into our DocuSign rooms right here. And then if we have any envelopes that we saved as drafts or if, um, if we need to make any corrections, uh, this can be found within that envelopes tab right up top here. So we'll click on envelopes. We'll see that there's one draft that we just currently saved. If we want to kind of jump back into this, I can give this a click right here. And it should bring me back to the very beginning where I have those documents and add recipient and things like that. As you can see right here, perfect. So I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna do this email instead. I'm gonna hit next. I'm going to hit send right here this time. And I'm going to jump into uh, my email and I'm going to see if I can find that, uh, that DocuSign email for us. And it should send out pretty instantaneously. Um, as you see right here, it says waiting for others. Since we sent this DocuSign form out, we can give this a click again and it should just give us some updates on what's going on with this document. So as you see, buyer one needs to sign before it can be sent over to buyer two right here. Now, taking a look, I did get that, uh, that DocuSign uh, email right here. And this is from your client's point of view, right? So this is what your client is going to see. Um, it'll have that please DocuSign um, title subject line right here. But this is what, what the envelope looks like, or sorry, this is what the email looks like uh, for your clients without me entering any additional context. So again, it does a pretty good job of, of self-explaining what needs to happen here. We can click on review documents from the client's point of view. As this loads up, this is what a client will see in real time as they're signing. So first they'll go ahead and agree and acknowledge. They'll click on continue right here. And if they click on this start button, this will actually drag them all the way to their next, um, next focal point, I should say. So as you see right here, we only put the focal point at the very bottom. So we'll click on sign here. That's perfectly fine. And then bam, your first signer has signed the document. Um, what's cool about this too is your, your, sign, your, um, your clients don't need uh, to have a DocuSign account in order to sign these documents. They can actually, just like this right here, they can get the email, review the documents and sign it. And once they sign it and finish, click finish at the top here, it'll give them um, a, a banner saying that, uh, that it has been sent off. It gives us the option as well for the client to download this, this PDF or this, um, this document or print it out. So I'm going to just click on combine PDF. It'll give me a download right here. And now I'll have a download of that signed document. Uh, another cool thing is, is once all parties sign, uh, you will be notified that, uh, that, um, that everybody's completed the documents via email. So just know that, uh, that you won't be out of the loop, even if, um, even if you're not on that, um, on that signing. Let me see if I can go back here. And um, last but not least, once, um, once I signed now, we can refresh this and we can view our envelope. And now we see that uh, signer one has completed the signing. And now we're currently waiting on signer two to sign. Uh, if there's ever a situation where um, we're halfway through a signing and we notice that a document is incorrect, right? Um, we can actually jump back into this envelope. So we can click on envelopes here. We can click on uh, the envelope that we want to correct, and we have the ability to correct this envelope right here. It'll give us an option. It'll say correcting. It'll take us through much like how we saw before. Um, and as you see right here, um, we'll go ahead and continue on. And then here we can go ahead and make any, um, make any adjustments. So maybe, uh, maybe there's another initial that needs to be placed somewhere. 
and then we can go ahead and hit correct right here, and then it should send out. So this is how this is how uh, you're able to kind of go ahead and send documents out to get to get signed. Once once a document is signed, uh, it'll come back here. Um, let me let me see if I can let me see if I can correct this and remove second signer. And once we go through and and, uh, and we remove this right here. There we go. Um, now that there's nobody else left to sign this uh, envelope, it'll say that it's completed. So again, if you're sending this to one, one individual and they, they sign it and it comes back, it'll say completed right here within your envelopes. Uh, but not only that, if we go back to our documents section as well, we'll have um, a document that says um, signed right here. It'll actually be green. And uh, this way, we can actually see which documents have been signed, right? So we have the GGAR and the CAR because they're both on that same envelope. Um, we can actually go back to our docu um, our opportunities here inside of KW Command. I'll hit refresh right here just because whenever I'm doing something on, on the back end or on a different program, I always kind of like them to be synced back up. Um, as we're taking a look right here, since we connected our DocuSign, it gives us the ability to toggle between um, computer files that we can drag and drop or our actual DocuSign. Um, if you click on DocuSign, you may have these gray bars that pop up that we can't pull anything just yet. We actually have to select a working folder right here um, in order to, to be able to view the documents inside of each folder. So um, each DocuSign room, when we create a DocuSign room, will have one folder. It's called Room Docs. Um, in our DocuSign 201, I'll show you how to kind of um, create multiple different document folders. So you can have one folder just for signed, one just for unsigned, to kind of make it a little bit easier when we go back to our opportunities. But for now, we'll just have that one room docs right here. And if we give that a click, it'll open up all these different drop downs here. If I give this a click right here, it'll show all the different forms inside of that DocuSign room. And as you see right here, we'll see some that say signed and some that may not say signed on it. So we're actually looking for the signed documents here. Then once we add that in, it'll upload and then you'll be able to submit to Market Center. So a pretty cool different way to be able to, uh, to add, add your, your forms to be able to be signed in one kind of fluid motion and have them come back here where you're just able to select, drag and drop and be able to kind of add this uh, to, for your Market Center in a very fluid motion. Now, I think uh, for the most part, um, I'm going to leave some of the other uh, cool uh, pieces for our, our next class for DocuSign 201. Um, but um, if you're watching this video um, at a later date, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. Um, I'm going to stick around for, for those of you who are here live with us uh, to answer any additional questions that I may have missed. But uh, please reach out to us at support at scottleroymarketing.com if you have any additional questions. Uh, we'd love to help you further. Thank you and have a great day.